Welcome to Doing Dental School. My name is Kajal Khatri. I'm a senior at Marquette University and I just got into dental school. So I created this platform just to create sort of a virtual mentorship where I can help you, you can help me, and we can all help each other achieve our goals. So if you want to stick around, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Okay, so about a year ago today, um, I was trying to figure out where I wanted to apply to dental school. I knew that I wanted to apply to cycle and I had a few schools in mind, but I didn't know like what I should look for and how I even create my list of where I apply. So I thought I would kind of just share how I created my list and what factors really came into consideration and what I wish I would have known as well. So the first thing that I did when I was figuring out where I wanted to apply was I bought the Idea Dental School Explorer. And I would recommend this 110% to anyone who's applying to dental school. There's two versions online. So it's, I think I bought the bundle of the online and the book version, but honestly, all I really used was the online version. I don't think the book had as much information that I was looking for as the online version. The online version honestly has so much information that you could possibly imagine. It has you know, school names where you can filter it by the state. You can filter it by public and private. You can see what the average GAT score, the GPA is. You can see how many students they interviewed, how many they extended offers to. You can see how many got in. Like there's so much information on there. And I would highly recommend it to anyone because it made figuring out where I wanted to apply. It made figuring out where I wanted to go so much easier. The next thing that I considered was location. So obviously I wanted to figure out what schools were in my home state. There's only one in Wisconsin, but yeah, I know that there are other states that have more than one or not even one dental school in their state. So figuring out location of what's in state, what's out of state, public and private institutions, also looking at maybe where do you wanna see yourself kind of practicing in the future because obviously, you know, you build connections where you are in dental school. And so building connections in the surrounding area might mean that you end up practicing there in the future. So that's another thing to keep in mind. The other thing also that is on the Dental School Explorer um, is whether you're in a rural setting, an urban setting, or more of a suburb setting. It kind of is similar to like your college experience. You needed to figure out what kind of environment you wanted to be in, whether you want it to be in a college town or not, that type of stuff. So location is really important and something to definitely take into consideration. So the next thing I took into consideration was residency and whether I was going to be considered an in-state or an out-of-state student. And this is just because certain dental schools are public institutions and they're funded by the government. So they have certain capacities and limits of how many out-of-state students they can accept. And so my example of this, personally, I'm a Wisconsin resident. There's only one dental school in Wisconsin, which is Marquette University. And so I started looking in surrounding states just based on location, next logical thing to do. So I was looking in Illinois and UIC, which is University of Illinois at Chicago. I was looking at that, it's pretty close. It's only like two hours away from me. And I was looking at that school, but the thing was is that I actually chose not to apply there. Reason being is that they actually only take two to three three out of state students. So I knew that my stats weren't so good that I was going to be one of those two or three students. And so I chose not to apply. There. So this is something to take into consideration. Again, the idea adsas Dental Explorer is a really, really good resource for this because it actually shows you how many out of state students are accepted and how many are interviewed. So that's a really good resource to look at when you're considering residency. The next thing that I looked at was DAT and GPA. So of course, as applicants, we are not defined by these numbers, but dental schools do look at them. So you need to make sure that you're setting goals that are pretty attainable and making sure that you're kind of around the average, whether that be a little bit above or a little bit below of a school that you're applying to. The other thing also is that some schools do have cutoffs and kind of minimums of DAT and GPA. So make sure you look on their websites or the Adia Dental School Explorer. I'm sorry I keep plugging it. It's just such 
a good resource and I used it for everything. But just look there, it'll actually probably tell you what the minimums are and it'll also tell you kind of just the averages and everything you need to know about DAT and GPA. <laughs> The next thing to look at is prereqs. So most schools have pretty similar prereqs, but there are a few schools that have some oddball prereqs. I know some schools have like microbio or psych or calc or something like that, where you do have to take that in order to get into dental school. The thing to keep in mind here is that you actually don't have to take the prereqs before you apply. So you can still get accepted before you take those prereqs, but you need to take those prereqs before you matriculate into your first year. So that means that you just wanna make sure that you have time, if there are any prereqs that you haven't taken yet, you just wanna make sure that you have enough time to take those prerequisites before you would become a first year student there. So the next thing I looked at was actually every school's mission statement. And I know this kind of sounds weird and you're like, yeah, whatever, that's a mission statement. But I read through every single one of every school I applied to. And the reason for this is because I knew what I was looking for in a dental school. I knew that I wanted a school that was very clinical heavy. And I knew that I wanted a school that gave back to their community. And so I wanted to see that reflected in the mission statement. So I actually read through every single mission statement and I only applied to schools that you know, kind of aligned with the mission that I had of becoming a dentist. And so I wanted to only apply to schools that had a really good clinical program and gave me amazing clinical hours and experiences. And I also wanted to apply to schools that gave back to their own communities. But of course, aside from just clinical experience and service, other things that you might be looking for in a dental school might include research. Maybe you want to go to a research heavy school. Maybe you want to go to somewhere where, you know, faith is a really big thing as a part of their education. Maybe you want to go to somewhere that really kind of strives for diversity. So there's obviously a ton of missions that schools can have. So just make sure you kind of read through the mission and see that your values align with the dental school. The last thing I took into consideration was cost. And obviously dental school is expensive. No matter where you go, dental school is going to be really, really expensive. So obviously that's why I kind of kept it as the last thing is because I know that dental school is expensive no matter where I go. However, you can be a little less in debt than you could be. And so I wanted to just make sure that I was applying to schools where I wasn't going to be in debt for a million and one years. I wanted to make sure that it was kind of an attainable goal that I could actually achieve. The last thing I wanted to discuss was how many schools you should apply to. And there isn't really a finite answer that I can just give you like, this is how many schools you should apply to. And the reason for that is because every single applicant is different. If you know that you have a really high GPA and a really high DAT score, then you don't need to apply to a million schools. But if you know that you're kind of on the lower end or maybe in the middle section, maybe you should apply to a few more. So to give you a reference, I'd consider myself a pretty average student. Um, and I applied to about 15 schools. I probably didn't need to apply to 15. That was honestly a little bit too much now looking back in retrospect, but I also knew that I did not wanna take a gap year. And I knew that I wanted to get in my first round because I knew that I was ready to take on the challenge of dental school. And so that's why I chose to apply to 15. But you have to make a decision based on your own stats and your own experiences and kind of your own thoughts on this whole journey. So yeah, those are all the things that I took into consideration when I was figuring out where I should apply to dental school. I would highly recommend just organizing everything into a spreadsheet. That's what I did. It kind of just helped me visualize what I was doing. I kind of just organized all of the million thoughts that were going through my head. So yeah, but if you have any additional questions or if you have any additional tips too, feel free to leave a comment down below. I would love to chat. And also if you wanna kind of just follow along my dental school journey, or if you wanna stick around for more tips and tricks, make sure you subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up. All right, I'll see you later, bye.